highlights channel of the Ranveer show. This is TRS Clips. So time travel, ma'am. Uh, should we begin by talking about Interstellar? Have you watched Interstellar? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have watched Interstellar. Yes, did you yes. like the film? Yeah, yeah. It's a nice movie. Yes. yes. <laughs> As an astrophysicist, why did you like Interstellar? Um, see, even for an astrophysicist, you need imagination to look at what exactly uh, it would be, right, out there. Mm. So, um, uh, I mean, you are a person, so you will have your own visualization of how things are out there, etc. So, when you look at things which are uh, put out by somebody else uh, with some context, with some storyline, of course, it's nice to see that. So, I think one of the pictures which I watched... Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, is time travel something that comes up in your field of study at all? Do you all ever kind of ponder upon it? Do you all do mathematics around it? Because wormholes as a concept have come up a lot on the show where I know that a lot of audience members probably at this point know what a wormhole is. For those of you who don't, uh, think of space, like physical space or even outer space as a sheet of paper. Now, if you draw two points at the two corners of the paper and draw a line that goes between those two points, that's the kind of distance it would take for you to get from Earth's star system to even like the nearest star system, which is light years away. But what if I take one corner and then take the other corner and then fold the paper? Now those two points are touching each other. You can actually do this with space. Theoretically speaking, speaking from the perspective of astrophysics, you can possibly do this. So mathematically, wormholes are a possibility, but practically they're not a possibility because the nature of a wormhole is such that when you pass through it, the wormhole collapses. Am I right? Am I wrong? It's a very raw understanding of what a wormhole is. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, familiar, I mean, not uh, scientifically familiar with wormholes, but the point is that the um, uh, the uh, theoretical predictions are many. Oh, many things can be done. So cosmology, for that matter, was also theoretically uh, various ways. You know how the universe would expand forever or collapse in one time or go. You know, b bouncing back and forth. What is cosmology? So, in the sense that universe, in the sense that if you look at the universe, whether the universe is constantly expanding and uh, the nearby stars will ever, you know, uh, say get separated over a time scale or, you know, they come back and collapse in the distance kinds of after a while it uh, reduces or just moves back and forth kind of a thing. But now we know that, you know, there are, we are expanding and there are, uh, the future there was, I mean, there was a big bang and then a, a expansion takes place, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But these are all evidence-based. So we rely on a lot of experiments and then do that. So, but at the same time, there are a lot of theories which you need to be ready for. If it is like this, then it should be the way it is, universe is like this. Similarly, out there to uh, to explain various kind of cosmological features, you can put out various theories. But there are experiments which will say that, okay, only within the framework, only these theories are possibly correct, but these are not. We are not in any position to evaluate string theory, wormholes, <laughs> etc., etc. right now. As in theoretically speaking, the there's a lot of lot places of mathematics takes you. Yeah, exactly. But practically speaking, yes. engineering can't create those yeah, possibilities. Yeah, right. At least where we are for now. Exactly. So you, you, as you said, if you look at an analogy of paper folding, you have this paper and you you cannot fold it on a large large scale, right? So you have something has to be seriously happening to make it fold or whatever. So change the uh, space-time environment right now you are in. Mm. So we understand space-time environment. For that matter, the gravitational waves, which were people used to be predicting and we would not, we, we thought that we'll not be detecting them, but then now we are able to detect gravitational waves. So we know that there is a space-time fabric. They can get, uh, you know, disperturbed by these uh, uh, events, the merger events. Uh, uh, so we are able to detect them as well. So the technology is moving forward in understanding this fabric, but then we don't have any way of like, figuring out a, uh, techni technologically how actually you can connect. But then uh, uh, there are time travel. Is We don't talk in terms of the outcomes of such e 
things but then we talk in terms of development which can actually detect or do something but at some times that outcome can come but we are nowhere near to it at all how because, far away um i don't know because <laughs> 10 years ago when we said okay gravitational waves can we detect maybe we can detect but we detected it so we need probably i don't know some uh, experiments have to be uh, i i don't know i'm completely lost at this point okay. to regarding that yeah. yeah this is what i appreciate about yes, scientists yes, yeah. that <laughs> scientists are very honest about where the limitations of science are at this point yeah yeah theoretically speaking could there be wormholes out there in outer space already because one of the theories is that hey could a black hole actually be a wormhole like if you actually go into a black hole you everyone knows that whole spaghettification thing that you'll be you'll be killed by the black hole basically you'll be stretched and killed uh that's what theoretically happens but yes. no one's actually tried to go inside a black hole and that's yeah. where this whole interstellar yeah. uh climax also comes in play sorry spoilers um Go watch the movie or stop this podcast right now and then come back after you've seen the movie. And for those of you who've watched the movie, three, two, one, we're back. At the end of Interstellar, when he goes into that black hole, he's transported to another dimension. Uh, that's what I loved about that film. That it just kind of sparked off the imagination of science fans all over the world. that hey this is what could possibly happen maybe you're transported to another dimension you don't actually die in a black hole have you ever thought of this have you ever thought of black holes being sort of wormholes so i know another theory is that we see a black hole maybe on the other side of a black hole is a white hole that which opens up to another universe or another dimension what do you have to say ma'am i'm just like throwing out all the science fiction stuff i know and waiting for you to say yeah this is probably possible <laughs> <laughs> yeah so it's interesting see black hole has been uh, the uh, you know uh, fascinating topic for various reasons basically because it's a huge unknown out there and the capability of physics and mathematics get stretched so what we as physicists and scientists are more worried about the framework of whether when you say something is actually valid you need better framework to address that condition so when we even get an outcome we first suspect that it is an artifact of something which is not properly taken care as in the science has not been taken care of yeah so something some some factor you have missing out there which is not really you have missed out so scientists get into this framework of you know whenever your result is you have got a result probably it is very exciting but then first you have to make sure that that actually is valid physically and mathematically now these are areas where they are all at the at the periphery okay so one first one looks at that the result you have got is actually correct and then you move on to something so that itself takes a quite a bit of time time okay. to understand so there are millions of possibilities out there what is possible or not but in a movie you can actually find the very nice way to project it that this is one of the possible ways where you can bring it a, a person out of th- through the black hole out to the other side kind of a thing but then in reality what the matter ha- is there what is the condition of the matter there it's in um, um you know it's in plasma form it's hot whatever magnetic fields everything is very complex there out there okay. and dynamics and the is uh, space time curvature so by the time you get all these parameters and solve it is like a major mess okay <laughs> were you angry when you were watching interstellar and the climax no it is no not angry is like uh, it's it's for me it's like a science fiction but you have to kind of suppress your uh, uh, scientist, scientist uh, evaluation you just <laughs> keep it stop thinking in that light just look at it as a story and enjoy so, it like we yes, saw yeah. interstellar as nolan's best film you saw it as a govinda film <laughs> no no not like that but it's like a nice depiction of something which which can be poss- one of the million possibilities yes i don't know yeah. <laughs> just a possibility okay what is the closest black hole to earth or we don't know because you can't see it the black holes are of different types like you know stellar black holes where like you know this is a serious case where you have a star and a white dwarf white dwarf is basically the remnant of a star but if the like the supernova was talking about the big star which explodes the remnant is a could be a black hole black hole is what physics mean, means that the density is so high that the light cannot escape you cannot see it 
so you have to detect it in an indirect fashion so you can be a star there's a star which is going just like the two mass thing which is going around we're talking about right the yeah. earth and the sun kind of a thing the same kind of a system binary stars are there where this the star which is going around the invisible black hole ah yeah so that is how we estimate that there is a huge mass present in a small volume that could be a wow uh, uh, black hole but there are also centers of galaxies like our own galaxies galactic center as huge black holes again how do you estimate the mass of it again the stars go around it one has to figure out the speed with which it is going find the orbit and then using just uh, uh, normal uh, gravitation laws you can actually get the mass estimation of that So, so these are all this two body system which you talked about is actually relevant in many places so yeah. there are star systems out there yeah. where stars bigger than our sun Much are revolving than... around something yes that's a possibility of the existence of a black hole um yeah the st- the, the the star which has been extremely massive collapsed exploded and the inner part collapsed resulting in a black hole but there would be some binary system where another star was ro- going around it which did not get disrupted in the process but still continues to go around the system okay and we measure the dynamics of it and then that is how we uh, say that yes there is a possibility for black hole there okay so such systems only in terms of binary we find but not in terms of a singular uh, black hole floating around kind of okay. thing yes okay so uh, are there scientists in the world who are dedicated to just studying black holes yeah how do you study it you see the movement of the star around it yeah so there are two ways mostly before the observations thing came about black hole studies a lot of theoretical studies like you know how a black hole can exist and what are the even horizon the uh, solving the equation physics equations and putting the magnetic fields etc etc all the the space time curvature and all that so the huge amount of people large groups are there who study this black holes uh in fact this i think it was a, a couple of years ago the nobel prize went and two two sets of people one is for the theoretical part of it the other is for the experimental part of it so both sides are equally strong and the experimental part takes a lot of time because you need to actually measure the uh, movements of the stars around going around and painstakingly do it so the nobel prize which awarded to the experimental set of people was measurement taken over 20 years <sighs> Yeah so if you look at towards the galactic center towards our center of the galaxy it's totally crowded too many stars out there so you have to actually have something called a, a, a adaptive optics where high resolution you need to figure out the each and every star separate out and identify its motion and it's a painstaking process so astronomy uh, historically is a very painstaking job because it takes a long time you look at the planetary motions you need years and years of data you have to collect test cricket of science <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah you're right okay yeah so you have to be very patient with each and every ball in the test cricket so you just hit that he did so similarly you need to actually patiently look at the observe take the data take the data today tomorrow day take the data next year year wise then you actually compile everything so this is 20 years of data which actually created the entire orbit around this central black hole of our galaxy and then estimate the mass so black hole has been fascinating for quite some time for various reasons so these are playlists made especially for you we've tailor made learning experiences for you the rs clips